we have questions, you guys. Please get them in. But Kerry Conley, if you're out there, thank you so much for the question. This question was about USC playing Notre Dame. He said, the big doesn't usually play non-conference games during conference play. And the rivalry, rivalry week at the end of November, won't the big be expecting USC to play? Now, this brings up a really great conversation. Um, this definitely had to be a discussion point when a USC was talking about moving to the, the Big Ten. There's absolutely no doubt this didn't, that this didn't come up at some point that USC was going to protect its special rivalry with uh, the Fighting Irish. And I, I know that there's a couple of things that are in USC's favor. One, this is a huge game. Uh, of all the games played by Pac-12 teams last year in a regular season, the, the USC game with over 6 million was the, the largest against Notre Dame. And it's kind of strange because that was, it's kind of, it was lower than I thought it would be, but it was still the highest in the Pac-12. Uh, this game is special it, for many years, going all the way back to the 60s and the 70s. Um, on television, it, it really was like almost the only, it was like the, the game of the year a lot of times. It, it's, this game has been the difference maker in many national championships going back. And so this game is huge. It is protected. But the question is going to be the scheduling problem, Rick. I'm not saying, no one in the right mind, no Trojan right mind saying that we're not going to play Notre Dame anymore. I think we are going to find a way to play them. But the question is, is where are we going to throw the game? Yeah, that's a that's a great point. Uh, the game will be played, but I think the game is, you know, Notre Dame is going to have to work with USC on scheduling. And we kind of all know that Notre Dame likes to do and be Notre Dame. But um, they're going to have to listen to SC on scheduling on this. And yes, they didn't. They had a chance to join the Big Ten. They have not. Who knows? They may at one point, but don't hold your breath. Um, so they have their relationship with um, with NBC. And at one time, that was a, a great platform. But um, college football has evolved. And it's moved forward. And you know, USC in the Big Ten is... Uh, it's, it's a great opportunity. So yes, before in the Pac-12, Pac-10, Pac-8, back in the day, that was a big game, as you'd mentioned. It was one of the best games because they're one of the top 10 programs of all time. And USC would play them annually. Now moving to the Big Ten, guess what? There's Michigan, there's Ohio State, and there's Penn State. And then you have a championship game. So there's three more of the top 10 all-time programs. So Notre Dame... Um, you know, USC has three of them. Um, and so Notre Dame's going to have to work with USC on the schedule because, as you'd mentioned, Tim, there's going to be, this is going to be a major, uh, a major opportunity for Notre Dame to get more eyeballs. Yeah. And that's what they're about. And this is going to be one of the biggest games on their schedule. Yeah. And, and to reiterate the leverage part of this, you see, back in the day, USC it was the big game with, uh, with Notre Dame. I mentioned 6 million that they got last year uh, for the, the viewership in, in that game. Well, Ohio state and Michigan got over 17 million views uh, for their game. I'd have to imagine, and I, I, I don't have a crystal ball, but I'm just going to assume when USC plays Ohio state, when USC plays Michigan, I don't know if they get 17 million, but I think that those are going to be huge games and there's, very quickly, we're going to rekindle some some rivalries. There's some games that Ohio State fans remember. They could deny it, but they remember USC and what we've done to them in the past. Uh, Michigan fans, same thing. Some Rose Bowls that they probably want to avenge. There is some bad blood between these programs. Don't don't you forget that. Not to mention the fact you have the the, the regionality of you know the 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 salt of the earth Midwest beating up on those surfer boys from the left coast. So if there's going to be a lot of built-in rivalry here, and I'm wondering if if Notre Dame is losing some of that leverage they've had in the past, and I'm wondering if the Big Ten and USA use this leverage to force Notre Dame into the uh, the Big Ten. And on that thought, we have a very special guest coming in. We have Matt Zemek from Trojan's Wire. Matt, how are you doing? Doing great, guys. And hey, you you continue to knock it out of the park. Deuce Robinson recruiting against the SEC. Wonderful stuff. So you continue to do a great job. And just want to tell everyone here at the Voice of College Football, if you haven't done it already, subscribe to, like, share Trojan Conquest Live and the USC channel at the Voice of College Football to 
tangibly support what Tim and Rick uh, are doing every Sunday evening. Um, I'm, you know, because like the weather's lovely right now and they're giving up a little bit of that Sunday evening uh, real estate to give you, the fan, more USC content that you crave here at the Voice of College Football. Uh, my my thought about um, USC and Notre Dame, I mean, what, what comes across as really the interesting point is that, you know, NBC has the number two Big Ten game under the new Big Ten contract. You know, Fox has the number one. NBC has number two, and that's a pro- that's the prime time window, so 730 Eastern, 430 Pacific. And then CBS gets the third window at 330. That's going to be the Rutgers, Maryland uh, window that I like to call it. Um, so it's going to be interesting in the years when USC goes to South Bend, such as this year. You know, How's NBC going to handle that? Because NBC has the Notre Dame contract, and NBC is going to have the Big Ten number two game. I would think that NBC is going to insist on USC Notre Dame being a primetime game middle of October in the years when uh, USC has to go to South Bend. But then, like, does NBC get a a second game on on those Saturdays or is NBC just kind of stuck? You know, like, is that going to like, like, I can't imagine NBC would want to just, you know, give up a game slot on that Saturday. Like, would NBC, uh, go for like a late night game is that how it's going to work like a, a NBC will do uh Notre Dame USC at 7 30 Eastern 4 30 Pacific with the Notre Dame announced crew and then just like would NBC get like a an 11 Eastern 8 p.m uh you know game with uh you know uh let's say Michigan State at UCLA late uh, on the west coast I don't know how that's going to work but that's going to be a very very interesting piece I don't think we should worry about whether this series is going to continue because it's ratings gold. More perspective on this is that this was the only uh, USC regular season game, you know, before conference championship weekend. It was the only USC game Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreet called as a team uh, last season. And, you know, ESPN uh, didn't show the uh, USC Oregon state game in Corvallis that was slotted to PAC 12 network. And of course, you know, I lost my SHIT over that because that game certainly deserved better than PAC 12 network. But what that was the product of ESPN and Fox, you know, holding their cards and waiting to play the USC card late in the season. So like you're, you're, you know, Tim, you mentioned like the Big Ten. They like to get the, the non-conference games out of the way in early September and then just play the nine conference games consecutively. You're right. But like you're not going to see USC Notre Dame in September. <laughs> you're not. Well, <laughs> they're, they're, they're gonna, the networks are going to want that game to remain later in the year. I, I would like to think that Mike Bone and, for that matter, Notre Dame AD Jack Swarbrick got together and said, we're, you know, we're, we're going to keep things as they are. They had a little talk with NBC. They had a little talk with Fox. You know, let's let's uh, let's not mess up a good thing that we have going here. Well, maybe you can help me because maybe I'm missing something. Um, usually week zero and week one games uh, usually just have a, a bunch of nothing burger games. There's just like just zero interest that people want to even watch. Uh, where I'm thinking is I'm being USC selfish and I'm saying. USC is going to be traveling to the Midwest. So let's say there's nine. So there's nine games on um, the USC schedule. This is a big misconception, by the way. All people talk about how tough it's going to be yes. for USC to travel. Remember, there's nine games, but one of those is against UCLA. So that means we're playing them either here in LA or over there in LA, you know, right across town. So that's that's a non-issue. That leaves eight. Uh, I'm assuming, and I, I don't know the exact schedule, but we're going to get four home games and four away games. I, I don't know if they do you know, four and five or, or they flip around. I don't know how they're going to work it. But I'm assuming even down the middle, on average, it'll be four and four. So that means we're going back east into the Midwest four times a year. And those four times a year, I'm thinking, I've heard discussions you've had with um, with Mark, uh, and I've, I've heard discussions people have had as well regarding the fact they're probably going to bookend these things. So meaning you probably go out there, you, you fly out there on maybe like a Thursday, you have your walk through that, you go to your first game, and then you stay there all week long, and then you have your second game in the Midwest and then you fly home. Where I'm seeing this problem with the Notre Dame situation is now you throw that one in. That means we're doing five, and I'm okay with that. But do we want an additional? And this is my question to uh, Matt and, and to you, Rick. Do we want an additional game every other year in the Midwest, right in the middle of Big Ten 
uh, conference play. And I'm talking purely not not NBC executives or or Fox executives. I'm saying you as an AD, you as a coach, you as a fan. Do we want an additional trip to the Midwest somewhere in there, a fifth game in the middle of our schedule, our, our, our conference schedule? That's my question. All right, I'll take it and then I'll hand it over to Rick. Uh, my my thought, if like if I'm Mike Bone, here's what I would insist on. In the years when we when USC has to go to South Bend, and and so in other words, you're going to have to make uh, play five games, uh, you know, in in the Midwest or five games in the Central or Eastern time zones. The two things I would insist on: one, that if we play Notre Dame, we get an off week either the week before or the week after. Uh, and, and, and also, or you could also say either the week before, or if we played Notre Dame and then a Big Ten game, then we get an off week the week after uh, that that second follow-up week in the Midwest. So you get an off week either right before or right after the two-game trip, Notre Dame plus a Big Ten school. That would be one absolute non-negotiable uh, stipulation. The other thing is that if you, the the game attached to your two game trip in the middle of October to the Midwest, so Notre Dame game being one game and then the Big Ten being the other, it has to be a mid or lower tier Big Ten game. Like you cannot have Notre Dame in Michigan, Notre Dame Ohio State, Notre Dame Wisconsin, Notre Dame Penn State. Uh, like you you would it would have to be some moderate Big Ten opponent. Uh, you know, like may, maybe Northwestern, maybe uh, Minnesota. Um, like, I mean, you know, and PJ Fleck, like that Minnesota can be relatively decent, you know, not spectacular, but decent. So like you could, you could grumble about, Hey, you know, like Notre Dame, Minnesota, back-to-back weeks, maybe that's going to be tough, but like we can certainly establish a hierarchy between the really good big 10 teams or the big 10 teams that are expected to be really, really good and then a middle tier, and then a lower tier. Just you can't have the Notre Dame road trip and a top tier Big Ten opponent in consecutive weeks. And that just reinforces briefly why this Pac-12 schedule was such a, you know, an, an FU on the way out the door, having Notre Dame and then Utah yeah. in consecutive weeks. I mean, that's just flipping the bird. And so I, cer- I certainly hope that Mike Bone made his point very clear. Uh, and I'm sure he has discussed this. Like, how could he not have done it? Um, that, like, if we're when we go to Notre Dame, we have to get some cushion, either in an off week and or with a medium at best opponent on the other side of it. Yeah, and I and I somewhat agree with that. And I think um, one thing that would be interesting to see is you look at historically. Ohio State and Michigan schedules. They play right off the bat three or four home games in a row. Usually there are three non-conference opponents and there's a Big Ten team in there maybe on the fourth game. So a lot of those games against Ohio State, Michigan, even Penn State. I think Penn State this year plays Auburn its third game. And then I think they play Central Michigan their fourth game. And I think they start off the year with Purdue. But really, in those first three to four uh, games, why not have USC play Notre Dame? Let's say in the third game. Like you were saying, Matt, you kind of bookend them. So you play Notre Dame, you're going to have a great TV window. Uh, You know, you're going to go up against, what, Ohio State and San Jose State. You're going to go up against Michigan and UNLV, right? So you, you get that game. And then you have the next week where you play Northwestern. And like you'd mentioned, Matt, you come back to L.A., you get a bye. And then you continue the schedule. So the game is not in mid-October like it normally is. But if you're Notre Dame, you don't have the leverage because you're dealing with Fox, CBS, and NBC in the Big Ten. You had a chance to go to the Big Ten. You did not go to the Big Ten. What we're going to offer you is just a change in you know time slot. Uh, change in, in you know from October to, se- to September, but we're helping you build your brand because guess what? Notre Dame's got a national following and there's going to be a lot of interest in that game because Big Ten opponents want USC to lose and all the Notre Dame Subway alum want USC to lose, right? They want Hollywood to lose. 
So I, I would be interested in a week three or week four Notre Dame game. Maybe you play Northwestern week three or, or Illinois, and then you play Notre Dame, you come back to LA and have a bye week. So the issue I'm having with a couple of these conversation is one, I don't, you guys are addressing the, the point from the USC standpoint. I mean, I, I see the bye week, but Matt, I'm not sure if the rest of the pack, you know, the, the other teams in the, in the big 10 are going to say, okay, well, we'll give you Northwestern. I, I don't know if they're going to act. I mean, that's, that's a lot of, that's a big ask. I get you there. Right. I, I totally get that. And, and my, my point is, I think we need to use the leverage on many levels. Um, like I said, they are, we have to make it happen. Yeah. But here, here's the thing, Tim, like, USC, no one was forcing USC to go to the Big Ten. So, like, I'm thinking that when when this was initially negotiated last year, you know, leading up to June 30, 2022, when the, the big bombshell, you know, was, was broken, like, in the lead up to the announcement on June 30, 2022, like, Mike Bone had to have said, we need this, this, and this. And I can, like, you're not going to get everything you want, but there should have been like some non-negotiable, you know, tent pole pillar type uh, asks that Mike Bone made of Kevin Warren in the Big Ten, of Fox, you know, of the main stakeholders, the main power players. And, you know, like he's he's smart enough to have done that. And, you know, uh, Rick earlier mentioned USC's baseball program. And it's interesting how Deuce Robinson fits into that. Like, it seemed as though Mike Bone hit a home run with Andy, Andy Stankowitz. USC's first in the, in the Pac-12. So you have the Andy Stankowitz hire. You have the Lindsey Gottlieb hire. USC women's basketball poised to take off. And, of course, he landed the plane metaphorically and literally <laughs> with uh, Lincoln Riley. So, like, Mike Bone, he's making all these splash hires. He's one very smart cookie. Like, I would be stunned if he didn't get some hardcore – you know, firmed up stipulations and concessions from the Big Ten. I'd be stunned if he didn't get at least some significant baseline uh, requirements when, you know, the, 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 the original negotiations to enter the Big Ten, uh, you know, were in their final stages. And, yeah. and here's, here's something else that, that um, what helps out is Notre Dame is independent. Yes, they play anywhere from four to six ACC teams every year. If you look at their future schedules, you know, it's between four and six, but they have an independent schedule. So they, that allows them more flexibility in, in moving a proposed October game to September. It doesn't have to be Northwestern or Illinois. It could be another team that's in close proximity to Chicago, to South Bend. It could be a Wisconsin, or it could be Purdue. It could be Indiana. You know, it's, it's, there's flexibility on who the opponent can be. Yeah. For, I mean, from, from South Bend, Indiana, you're right smack dab in the middle, you know, except if you talk about the, the extremes, if you talk about going to Maryland, right. Yeah. Um, out, out East, that's fine. But, but pretty much everywhere else, it's just like you're within, within a bus ride of a lot, a lot of the, the big 10 schools. So I, I get that. I, I'm just saying we, there's, we're saying four, I'm just doing the math in my head. So there's one trip with two, you don't want to be out there for two weeks. Right. So this little, the way I've worked it out is as you, as you bookend them, you have two bookend week weeks where you're going to be out in, out in uh, Big Ten country. If you add in the Notre Dame game, that means either you're going to have a two and three bookend or you're going to have a two, two and a one. And it just kind of, it's, it's, that, it's just that, it's not the travel is the problem. It's the timing of the travel and how, if you have to go back and forth, back and forth. And I would, again, I'm saying as far as being a coach, being an AD, if I'm a fan, if I want what's best for USC, we're playing that game also for another reason as well. You know, it's a great way to kickstart. We always talk about, and it's true, how many Heisman trophies has that game on both sides decided, right? You get that big showcase game true, but you could flip the coin on that one and say, hey, listen, what about starting the year with that game? Get all the attention, get all the momentum, the hype on your guy early on this season. Um, I think there's a, a lot of benefit. I don't have the answer to what's going to be, but I do think that uh, having that game in October, and we don't ever want to play in South Bend in November for obvious reasons, but um, you you just don't want to add that extra game. So therefore, I'm thinking schedule wise, USC should try to use their leverage to move that game to the beginning of the year. I would I would add this point that in the years when you have to go to Notre Dame and, and that problem of you know having to play five games you know in the Central or Midwest uh, time zones emerges. Tim, in the game in the years when you have to go to South Bend, like the the schedule should have a, a week zero game. Quite frankly. Because you will need that cushion 
mm. uh, later in the season to build in another uh, buffer, you know, of rest for the team. So, you know, without the having to go to South Bend when you're hosting Notre Dame on Thanksgiving weekend, you don't need that extra cushion because the logistics aren't nearly as complicated with one fewer uh, Big Ten road game or one fewer Midwest road game, I should clarify. Um, so so that's another uh, piece of this larger puzzle. And that's your and that's your key right there. How about week zero games are usually pretty bad, right? We see them. They're not usually very good. Imagine week zero, Notre Dame, you get all eyes are on the USC Notre Dame game. It might allow that game to stick out like it deserves, and maybe it could get some more momentum. From and that. it'll be 90 degrees, so that's my counterpoint. We, we can have a little bit of Midwest humidity, 90 degrees and 90% humidity. I mean, that, that might not be too bad. Well, one, one thing about the, like, the long-term future of the rivalry, let's remember that the 100th anniversary of USC Notre Dame is in 2026. And uh, so like you're, you're not going to see – uh, like like the 100th anniversary, that's going to be a powerful driving force to say, hey, let's this has been special for a century. Let's continue it for another one. Well, speaking of Notre Dame, there's another there's a guy who um, played really well at USC. Uh, that was USC. Uh, that was USC's great tailback, Reggie Bush, who is now working on 4,767 days since those jerks over at the NCAA decided to take his Heisman Trophy away. So Charlie Baker, I've said this five weeks in a row. You have really one job, figure it out. Somehow give this man back his trophy and then we can move on from there. <laughs>